Hello, I'm Matt Wilbur, Pottawatomie County Attorney, and I'm going to talk to you about the upcoming special election set for August 1st. This video presentation is solely for informational purposes about the special election, the three options available to voters, and the legal effect of those options. On May 31st, a petition was filed with the Pottawatomie County Auditor's Office asking for a special election to determine how your county supervisors should be elected. The date of that special election has been set for August 1st, and early voting will begin on July 12th. Polls will be open on Election Day from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. All voters will have the option of voting for one of three alternatives. Plan 1. Plan 2, or Plan 3. Each of these plans have very different ways of electing the five members of the County Board of Supervisors. Pottawatomie County is presently a Plan 1 county. That means that each member of the Board of Supervisors is allowed to reside anywhere in Pottawatomie County, and the voters of the county have the ability to vote for all five members of the Board of Supervisors. Plan 2 would divide Pottawatomie County into five districts of roughly equal population. One supervisor must reside in each of the districts, but the voters would also have the ability to vote for all five members of the Board of Supervisors. Plan 3 would also divide Pottawatomie County into five districts of roughly equal population, and again, one supervisor must reside in each of the five districts. The main difference with this plan is that voters would elect the one supervisor who resides in the same district as the voter, and do not vote for the four supervisors in the other four districts. So in a nutshell, if you don't care where the individual supervisors live within Pottawatomie County, and you want to be able to vote for all five members of the board, you should vote for plan one. If you would like the members of the board to live in specific districts, but you still want to be able to vote for all five members of the board, you should vote for plan two. If you would like the members of the board to live in specific districts, but you want to be able to vote for one board member in your district and not for the other four supervisors in the other four districts, you should vote for Plan 3. A question that frequently gets asked is, what would the supervisor districts look like if Pottawatomie County switched to Plans 2 or 3? This is a bit tough to answer because the actual districts cannot be set up until after the election. We can, however, predict with some confidence what a district would probably look like by taking a look at the law. The first question, however, is deciding who draws the maps if Plan 2 or Plan 3 is adopted. Under Iowa Code Section 331.210A, if either Plan 2 or Plan 3 is adopted after the special election on August 1st, a temporary county redistricting commission would be appointed, consisting of three, five, or seven members. The majority of the commission would be appointed by the current members of the Board of Supervisors. However, since there are no elected supervisors who belong to the Democratic Party, the Pottawatomie County Democratic Party chairperson would appoint the remaining member or members of the redistricting commission. The commission would have the responsibility of drawing up the initial supervisor districts in Pottawatomie County using criteria set forth in Iowa Code Chapters 42 and 49. First, Iowa Code 49.3, subsection 2 says, All election districts, including city wards and county supervisor districts, shall be drawn according to the following standards. A. All boundaries, except for supervisor districts for counties using Supervisor Representation Plan 2, pursuant to section 331.209, shall follow precinct boundaries. B. All districts shall be as nearly equal as practicable to the ideal population for the districts, as determined by dividing the number of districts to be established into the population of the city or county. C. All districts shall be composed of contiguous territory as compact as practicable. D. Consideration shall not be given to the addresses of incumbent office holders, political affiliations of registered voters, previous election results, or demographic information other than population headcounts, except as required by the Constitution and the laws of the United States. E. 
cities shall not be divided into two or more county supervisor districts unless the population of the city is greater than the ideal size of the district. Cities shall be divided into the smallest number of county supervisor districts possible. The only difference between Plan 2 and Plan 3, as far as districts go, is that Plan 2 does not require following of precinct boundaries, while Plan 3 does. I will now move on to a discussion of the factors that go into the district map drawing process. Factor number one. Districts need to be as close to the ideal population as possible. The U.S. Census population for Pottawatomie County in the last census was 93,667. So the ideal district population for each of the five districts would be 18,733. Districts should be as close to the ideal population as possible, generally within 5%. Factor number two. Districts need to be contiguous territory and as compact as practicable. Districts also need to be convenient contiguous territory and not merely touching at the corners. Contiguous simply means that the precincts have to be adjoining. So you cannot have a few precincts from the east end of the county combined with a few precincts from the west end of the county. Compactness is defined elsewhere in Iowa Code 42.4, subsection 4. In general, reasonably compact districts are those which are square, rectangular, or hexagonal in shape, and not irregularly shaped to the extent permitted by natural or political boundaries. If it is necessary to compare the relative compactness of two or more districts, or of two or more alternative districting plans, the tests prescribed by paragraphs A and B shall be used. A. Length-Width Compactness the compactness of a district is greatest when the length of the district and the width of the district are equal. The measure of a district's compactness is the absolute value of the difference between the length and width of the district. In general, the length-width compactness of a district is calculated by measuring the distance from the northernmost point or portion of the boundary of a district to the southernmost point or portion of the boundary of the same district and the distance from the westernmost point or portion of the boundary of the district to the easternmost point or portion of the boundary of the same district. The absolute values computed for individual districts under this paragraph may be accumulated for all districts in a plan in order to compare the overall compactness of two or more alternative districting plans for the state or for a portion of the state. B. Perimeter compactness. The compactness of a district is greatest when the distance needed to traverse the perimeter boundary of a district is as short as possible. The total perimeter distance computed for individual districts under this paragraph may be accumulated for all districts in a plan in order to compare the overall compactness of two or more alternative districting plans for the state or for a portion of the state. This is a fairly long-winded way of saying that districts cannot be gerrymandered into odd-shaped districts. The ideal district shape is basically square or rectangular and as small as possible while containing close to the ideal population. Factor 3. Certain things cannot be considered by the Commission. These include the addresses of incumbents, political makeup of various districts, and how various precincts have voted in previous elections. Factor number four, cities cannot be divided into multiple districts unless the city itself is larger than the ideal population size of a district. If it is necessary to divide a city, it must be divided into the smallest number of county supervisor districts possible. All cities in Pottawatomie County are smaller than the ideal district size except for one, Council Bluffs. U.S. Census data for Council Bluffs has its population as 62,625. Not only is this larger than the ideal district size of 18,733, but it is larger than three ideal districts. Therefore, Council Bluffs has to be divided into four districts because this is the smallest number of districts possible as required by law. And there will be one district which does not contain Council Bluffs at all. So taking these criteria into account, 
How will the commission go about its business in the event that the voters adopt plans two or three? Luckily, they would have assistance from both the Potawatomi County GIS Department and the Iowa Secretary of State's office. The Iowa Secretary of State's office has specially licensed software called ESRI Redistricting, which accounts for the legal requirements in Iowa Code Chapters 42 and 49. This software has been licensed by the County GIS Department. GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems, and this department has access to precinct maps, city limit maps, census data, etc. That software allows GIS to assist the Commission in setting up supervisor districts in the event that Plan 2 or Plan 3 is the preference of the voters during the special election. In planning in advance of that possibility, GIS has already put together multiple options to illustrate various scenarios that may be permissible, as well as those that would not be permissible, for illustration purposes only. It is important to note that any map at this point is hypothetical only. The actual district maps have to be drawn by the Commission, approved by the current Board of Supervisors, and accepted by the Iowa Secretary of State's office. Also, any districting plan may be challenged by any Potawatomi County voter that Iowa's legal criteria were not followed. Those challenges are heard by the Iowa Ethics and Campaign Disclosure Board, and non-compliant plans are rejected and then sent back to the Commission and Board with instructions to follow the law. Back to the GIS maps. These are the 10 scenarios that have been inputted into the ESRI redistricting software. First, I would like to show you some non-compliant districting plans so that you can better understand how all of these criteria have to work together. First, here is districting option two. Population, when possible, should be kept within 5% of the ideal population of 18,733. You can see that District 2, in the yellow, has a population which is too low, so this plan would have to be eliminated. Next, this is Districting Option 3. This particular scenario has several problems. First, there is a compactness problem for Districts 2 and 3. District 3 in blue is questionable because it is basically a skinny north-south rectangle. District 2 in yellow has a large compactness problem, but is also borderline compliant with the requirement of contiguous precincts. Technically, all precincts touch, but you can see from the very odd shape of District 2 that this would likely not survive a challenge. The next map is Districting Option 4. This plan has an obvious population problem as District 1 is very large, almost 12.5% over the ideal population. This is an intriguing map as far as attempting to create two basically rural slash urban districts, but there's just no way to solve for the population problem. If the Minden Precinct was taken from District 3 in blue and added to District 5 in pink, and then one of the precincts from District 1 in green was added to District 3, again in blue, you could get closer, but would still be over the 5% population deviation problem. So once again, this is not really a viable map. This next map is for districting option five. District one is too big as far as population goes, but just barely. It may pass muster except for the compactness problems with districts three in blue and four in purple, which start to look pretty gerrymandered. The map for districting option six eliminates the population problem, but retains the compactness issues of the previous map. This map is for districting option nine. Population figures look good, but district three in blue is again a skinny north-south rectangle with a wraparound extension to the south to include Council Bluffs Precinct 14. Again, compactness is the issue, but this is getting closer to meeting the requirements. The next non-compliant map I'm going to show is for districting option 10. Population is good, but there are compactness issues with districts one in green, three 
in blue and especially four in purple. The next two non-compliant map options I'm going to show are getting very close. Districting option eight and districting option seven. First, as to option eight, district three in blue is just outside of the population range we want at 5.146% under ideal. Again, very close. Next, as to option seven, population figures look good for all districts, but district three in blue isn't really as compact as it could be with precinct 11 sort of awkwardly dangling off to the south. This leaves the last option that I'm going to talk about, districting option one, which appears to be compliant in all respects. All of the districts are nice and compact, and they are also all within the acceptable population range. Again, these are hypothetical scenarios, but a districting of Pottawatomi County will likely look similar to this option. You can see from the potential map scenarios which comply, or at least arguably comply with Iowa law, that all districting plans would almost certainly result in one large rural district that encompasses all of the rural communities in Pottawatomie County. Walnut, Avoca, Hancock, Oakland, Carson, Macedonia, Minden, Neola, Trainer, Underwood, McClelland, and Crescent. The remaining four districts would be split among Council Bluffs, Carter Lake, the two Lewis Townships, and Garner, although the specific makeup of those districts is potentially subject to a couple of options. I need to remind you that each of these maps are hypothetical scenarios only. The actual district maps will have to be drawn by the Commission, approved by the Board and the Secretary of State, and may be challenged by a voter who believes that the district maps were unfairly drawn. However, the initial maps I have shown as part of this presentation will certainly be the same group of maps that will initially be reviewed by that commission, and those commissioners will be required to follow the same laws and guidelines that have been discussed in this video. The polls will be open on August 1st from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., and early voting begins on July 12th. Again, when you're reading your ballot, Plan 1 is a vote to let supervisors live anywhere in the county and voters elect all five supervisors whenever they are up for election. Plan 2 is a vote to put the supervisors into districts and voters would still elect all five supervisors at election time. Plan 3 is a vote to put the supervisors into districts and voters elect the one supervisor living in the same district as the voter and do not vote for the four supervisors representing other districts. I hope you have found this presentation to be helpful as you decide which option to vote for on August 1st. The opportunity to choose your method of representation of county government is an important one, and it's one that will affect the citizens of the county for many years to come. Thank you.